Today, we're gonna to talk about the most difficult thing in environmental engineering. No, it's not the complex calculations or the technical challenges. The most difficult thing actually starts before you even get your first job. Hey everyone, my name is Randy Lee and I'm an environmental engineer. After years of working in this field, which makes me feel pretty old after saying that, I've discovered that it's not the workload, projects, or the technical skills that you need to know that are the most difficult thing about environmental engineering. The most difficult thing about this job actually starts before your entry-level position. It's getting your foot in the door in this field. And here's what I mean by that. Every student who graduates from university majoring in this field, whether it's environmental engineering or any other engineering field, is pretty well equipped for an entry-level position. College should have disciplined each student enough by teaching them how to manage their time wisely, prioritizing critical tasks, and taught them the necessary theories and concepts behind every single project and classwork. So by the time they graduate, they're ready to apply that knowledge into the real world. Well, some of that knowledge, because most of the unrelated knowledge is pretty much useless, obsolete, or could be automated with some computer program. Let's be honest, some of the classes are pretty pointless, but I digress. Now here comes the most challenging part of it all, just getting in. Who really trusts a 22 year old to manage some multi-million dollar project? How does a company know that this fresh graduate really understands all of the environmental regulations that could potentially cost the company hundreds of thousands in fines if the company is out of compliance? The answer is they don't. They don't trust you. So that means they probably won't hire you from the start. It's hard for them to take that leap of faith and take on someone who has literally no work experience. This then leads to a cat and mouse, chicken or the egg game where you can't gain any work experience because you don't have work experience to begin with type of scenario. And I know some of you are gonna say, well, that's where internships come in. No smart company is ever gonna let some inexperienced graduate handle that type of large scale project. And yeah, you're right, I agree with you. Interns learn from experienced engineers, but how many of you actually got that internship that you applied for the first time? Are there even enough internship programs out there for every single student majoring in their field? The answer is no. And I know that because of experience. I applied to some engineering internships during my time at university, but I didn't get that. Most of you watching right now know from experience too because you also applied to that internship, but you also still didn't get it. And now you're frantically searching for anyone who would take you in or are applying to multiple different internships that are remotely related to what you're studying or even you know branching out to more different fields. So we've all been there, we've experienced it. Eventually, some of you will get that internship or entry level position and you know, congrats to you, but a majority won't be in that situation. And I know it's frustrating to go through this because environmental engineering, it's a field bursting with opportunities to make a real impact onto the world. But breaking into this field can feel like you're trying to open a door with a thousand locks. Whether you're a student looking for an internship or a recent graduate searching for that elusive entry level position, the competition is pretty fierce. It can feel like the weight of the world is resting on your shoulders. Even though you have the knowledge, the passion, and the drive to make a difference, you can't do anything without that first opportunity. So what can you do about it? How can you get in? Here's my advice. The secret is probably something you've already heard of and I won't go into full detail on each point because that would just take too long. And I might cover that in a separate video, but here it is. Networking, crafting a standout resume, and volunteering or potentially working for free. So briefly on all these points, networking is crucial in this field. Building relationships with professionals, professors, and even fellow students can open doors that might otherwise remain closed. Attend industry events, join professional organizations, and don't be afraid to like reach out to other people who you admire because you never know where that conversation might end. That being said, I don't hire people, so don't ask me for a job. Next is crafting a outstanding resume and cover letter. In here, you should highlight your relevant skills, experiences, and projects. Tailor your experience to each position you apply for and don't be afraid to showcase your passion. And what that means is, you know, what are your hobbies? What are your clubs, organizations? What do you do for the weekends for fun? Add that in. There are many online resources that can help you for free now thanks to like artificial intelligence or just the internet. Or you can go to your university's career center and ask for a professional resume reviewer. Again, I don't hire people and I'm not a professional resume reviewer, so don't tell me to look yours over. What you can do instead is just head onto my LinkedIn profile and see an example of mine. It's the most up-to-date version that I have based off of my current work experience, but I also don't change it that much because I don't need to since I'm not really looking for a job. So I'm not actively 
in need to constantly keep it updated as if I were to apply to a new job. This is just a good starting template for you if you don't have what you're looking for or you don't know where to start. And lastly, gaining practical experiences through internships, volunteer work, or research projects can set you apart from the competition. So you get opportunities to apply your knowledge in the real world setting. Even if it's unpaid or part-time, the experience that you gain will be invaluable. For example, for me, after being rejected to multiple engineering internships, I had to settle for a mostly science heavy or like biology related internship. Yeah, it wasn't really directly related to environmental engineering, but it did give me other experiences that helped me develop to where I am right now. Don't underestimate the power of lab equipment or even like soft skills learned through these unrelated internships. You never know if your interviewer or like manager happens to have like a science background. Trust me, the more diverse you are, the more interesting you will be and the more you'll stand out. So not everyone likes like a linear person. They want diverse background and interesting people to work with. So don't lose sight of your passion and purpose. And environmental engineering is about making a positive impact to the world. So let that be your driving force as you navigate through the challenges of breaking into this field. To all the aspiring environmental engineers out there, remember that the most difficult thing about environmental engineering is just the beginning of an incredible journey. With perseverance, strategic thinking, and a deep passion for sustainability, you can make a difference. Keep pushing forward, keep learning, and keep striving to open that door. The world is waiting for your contributions and I have no doubt that you will make a lasting impact. So that's all for this video. Like, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Comment down below if you want me to talk about a specific topic and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye everyone.